Right now, Cody and her coworker are upstairs making Christmas cookies, which is great news for me because I'm going to be attacking those when they're done. But I'm here on my computer and I just came across this movie that I'm really thinking about watching right now. I want to share it with you because it sounds really fascinating. Here's the movie I was talking about. And if you hear a bunch of noise from upstairs, that's Clark Man running around. But this is called Peter and the Farm. And I'll read you the description here. It says, Peter Dunning is a rugged individualist in the extreme, a hard drinking loner and former artist who has burned bridges with his wives and children and whose only company, even on harsh winter nights, are the sheep, cows, and pigs he tends on his Vermont farm. Peter is also one of the most complicated, sympathetic documentary subjects to come along in some time, a product of the 1960s counterculture whose poetic idealism has since soured. For all his candor, he slips into drunken, self-destructive habits, cursing the splendors of a pastoral landscape that he has spent decades nurturing, imbued with an aching tenderness. Tony Stone's documentary is both haunting and heartbreaking, a mosaic of its singular subjects' transitory memory and reflections, however funny, tragic, or angry they may be. I am a huge fan of documentaries, especially ones that are about interesting people like what Peter sounds like he is and has this interesting backstory that's dealing with these demons and stuff. It sounds really awesome. I checked it out here on Amazon, $6.99 to rent in HD, which I don't think is a bad deal considering a movie ticket costs more than that. This is an hour and 32 minutes, so I'll be watching this a little bit later after Clark Mann goes to bed and of course after I score some cookies. Nothing but time on their hands. And I've been jail enough to know just what that feels like. Ah, come on, San Diego. Bo, come here. Bo. Go by. Go by. They're afraid of uh, you. Walk in. You're going to go in the ball. I'm sorry, honey. It's over. Okay. And then I just leave it as a bug. Am I depressed? Am I doing art? Am I drinking too much, he asks. Uh, I compose suicide notes and stay drunk on cider. I write drivel, shitty little poems with lots of words like trap, lock, whack, work, chain, bind, weed. I'm trapped. Not like the red squirrel I have in the have a heart, bouncing off all six sides. Manic, scared to death. This isn't hardware cloth. This is a beautiful oasis. A paradise in the midst of ugliness. It's all I've ever wanted, more in fact, much more, and I alone can't do it. I watch the flower garden turn to weeds, its fence fall down, watch the sills rot, the barns lean, watch the juniper overcome, watch each room each building fill up with crap and dirt, decay, clutter, watch the chickens taken, the lambs die of life, fly strike, maggots, the house peel and sag. Where the fuck could I go? My life's been spent improving this farm. And never, at least not in a century, have the fields flourish like this. I have succeeded. The diversity, the billions of birds and plants, the richness, the beauty. It's only cost four children, two wives and an inheritance, but the old man is slowing down and the weeds are speeding up. But what else? Where else? So there you go. There's Peter and the Farm, which was a 
great movie about a very interesting person. Peter is a fascinating character, obviously with a lot of problems, but that's what makes him interesting. This movie more or less follows him through a year of his life on the farm, him taking care of animals, revealing stories about his past. It doesn't really tell one storyline, but just kind of reveals things piece by piece about things that he's been through in, in his previous life and things that he's going through now and how he's just really at his end. And he talks about a lot of serious topics like suicide and how his life has kind of fallen apart over the years, his alcoholism. It all kind of ties into this story that they're telling. And it's really amazing to watch just to see this guy kind of living this independent lifestyle, more or less. I mean, I think he's on the grid, but he's living this this lifestyle that most people don't live. And I think that's what makes it interesting to see is to just to just to see how far this guy has gone. And I have to warn you, if you are going to watch this, there's a lot of uh, vulgar language. There's some graphic scenes that I kind of showed you there in the beginning. But I think it's definitely worth a watch if you're interested in this kind of lifestyle or if you just want to see a story of a really fascinating person. Just to wrap this up, I want to thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you next time on Movies with Greg, if that's what I decide to call this. Also, I'm always looking for new documentaries, so if you know any good ones that you can recommend to me, I'd be happy to check them out. Just leave me a comment.